This has to be the quirkiest EV available that's not a Renault Twizy. The exterior styling is typical of any smart, it's cute and it's compact. And for such a small car, the interior is surprisingly roomy. And this is brilliant. I'd take it over a rev counter any day. 0 to 60 comes in at around 11 seconds, but somehow we managed it in just over 7 seconds. Quarter to half throttle is more than adequate for zippy town driving and the traffic light Grand Prix. But don't be fooled, the Smart can cover the ground for some fun on the country lanes too. And when needed, it can literally turn on a sixpence. Home charging is straightforward and extremely cheap. And it's free when you're out and about with Ecotricity. Hello. Well, this is a car that we've been trying to get our hands on for months and months and months. And this guy, Jonathan Porterfield, came up trumps for us. We are in a 2014 Smart 42 Electric Drive, or ED, as they like to call it. Okay, so this little car has got a 17.6 kilowatt hour battery and a 55 kilowatt motor, which gives you roughly 74 brake horsepower. That's not a lot, is it? It's not a lot, but it's a small car. And it is quite nippy. It I is say. nippy, definitely. I, I think it's got like 4.2 seconds, 0 to 60 kilometers an hour, which is about what, 24 mile an hour, 6 to Yeah, I think. Oh, 36 mile an hour, 36 mile an hour. I think it said, um, that way or that way? Let's go that way. I think it said 0 to 100 um, kilometers per hour was something like 11.4. Yeah. Something like that. So, yeah, it's not, it's not winning awards on speed. But it's um, for a little car, it's still nippy. Yeah, it is. It is. Yesterday I was driving this around the M25 <laughs> at, at 70 miles an hour, and that is nearly its top speed. I think its top speed is limited, or it might not even get there, to about 70, 75 miles an hour. But surprisingly, it was okay. I did do a little bit of slipstreaming, and I managed to cover 40 miles with about 50% of the battery. Six more than that. Was it 60? I think it was 40, 46 miles. 46 miles and about 60% of the battery, which isn't too bad because that's motorway speed. So it, it has got a usability factor. The battery is small, but I don't think that it's fair to say that it hasn't got any usability, depending on what you want to use it for. Sadly, this doesn't have the 22 kilowatt hour on board charger that you can use uh, when you uh, pair it up with three phase. Uh, so you, you've only got uh, 240 volt or 120 that you can charge it off. Charging time, depending on what, what you charge it on, is anywhere between seven hours. Uh, we've plugged this into our Tesla wall box and it, I think it came down to about five, didn't it? But if you've got a journey of 35, 40, maybe even 45 miles to work, then it's it's more than suitable. Or you just do it in the school room. Yeah. With one child. Yeah, that's true. We charged it overnight on Economy 7 and we charged it for less than a pound. So in terms of uh, pence per mile, it really it really is two pence per mile, isn't it? Mm. It's, it's, it's really good value. It's going to be really cheap to run. Yeah, exceptionally. Yeah. Uh, I MOT'd the car this morning and whilst I was underneath, I took the liberty of taking a few pictures. Uh, this is the size of the motor and it is about the size of my hand, or, <laughs> albeit it probably, it's, it's like that, so, but you can, you can get the gist. And you're getting 70 odd brake horsepower out of that. To give you an example, a Peugeot 208 with the three cylinder 1.2 engine that they use is roughly the same brake horsepower and physically with all the ancillaries taken off the engine, I could probably just about lift it myself. Put everything on it that you need to run that engine and it becomes a whole lot heavier. The weight of this car, because the battery is quite substantial, sitting just underneath our bums here, I had a good look at that as well. It's about that deep, it's as wide as the car and it goes from about where your feet are to just down behind your ass. With that, 
it's about 200 kilos heavier than its petrol counterpart. Uh, I didn't check the diesel actually, it was when I was checking the weight for the brake test. But even with that extra weight, two people in it, it it's still an okay ride. If you're gonna drive it down really bumpy country lanes, you, you know, you're gonna get you're gonna get a feel for the road, I can tell you. But actually, when it's on good roads, it's perfect, isn't it? Mm, it is. It's fully loaded, it comes with uh, two-stage heated seats, it's got air con, it's got, I'm gonna say heated rear screen, but that's heated, not really the an The heated extra. seats are really, really good, they actually. Are fantastic. They're really warm, and, and the air con, yeah, really, the, really good. Yeah, the air con's brilliant. We've got it turned off at the moment, but just because of the, the wind noise in the, uh, inside the car. the car. The heater, actually, is really fantastic on this car. We turned it on, and we had hot air in 10 seconds. Yeah, it's uh, fantastic. However, we did also lose 10 miles off the range, <laughs> but... So if you have to be really cold <laughs> to use it. But uh, you, you don't tend to need it because you've got the heated seats, and they are fantastic. Yeah. But are. once the car's hot, actually that mileage started ticking back up again we noticed so um because it, there's such a small area to heat can you preheat this car ah i don't know i don't know if you can get an app for it that's a good point i haven't got uh, access to an app because it's not our car but that's something we could have done with finding out really we'll see if we can find out because that would be good i suppose if you could preheat it while it's plugged in you're not going to lose your miles and i think because it's so small inside once it is hot as long as you're not opening windows and doors all the time i think it would stay quite warm well it's about getting the interior hot so the, yeah. like the, the, the stuff inside gets hot and then it makes the heat doesn't it yeah it's got built-in sat nav it's got built-in usb auxiliary lead bluetooth it's got everything like you can even put pictures i think you can even play dvds in it <laughs> and it's got a cd player but if i just push this button here then you can put a memory card in there and that's cool that. yeah it is quite good the stereo is pretty good actually isn't it This car is, is made for two people, as the name suggests, but actually you'd almost think that that would mean it would be really small, and it isn't. I suppose because there's no back seats, you've just got all the room in the car for you and your passenger, and it's a lot of room. You don't feel sort of claustrophobic in any way at all. No. I mean, me and James aren't the tallest people in the world. What are you on about? <laughs> six foot four. But um, our next door neighbour has got a son who's six foot four, actually is six foot four. Yeah, a real six foot four. And he got in it and he absolutely loved how it felt. Yeah. He, um, he felt really comfortable. He didn't have any issues with space and he's got legs probably the height of me. I think this would be brilliant, brilliant for getting me to and from work. It'd be amazing for me to use during the day at work when I'm just going to and from okay, my way. people's houses, um, doing very short journeys, oh. sort of sometimes one mile down the road, you know, up to 10, 15 miles down the road. And yeah. it'd be absolutely spot on for that. You know, I'm constantly having to find parking spaces and parking at work's a nightmare and this would be amazing. Yes. And the turning circle on it is insane. It's so small. It is. You can you can turn it on a very small postage stamp, can you? Yeah. It's a really good little car. So let's talk about the range. The range of this car, I think, was specified in the manual at was it 126 kilometres? Mm. 126 kilometres. Somebody drove on over 100 miles. We we've been driving it as, as we do around country roads, so I suppose yeah. that's going to make a difference. We're not bombing it down a motorway. But we we took it down the A447, didn't we? And, we did. And, and actually, yesterday when I was driving around the M25, I did 46 miles and about yeah, that's probably about right, you know. About 100. You probably could, yeah. You probably could. So that's better than the Leaf. The, the, leaf. Tw the 24 kilowatt. Yeah, our, our Leaf that yeah. we had, yeah. Actually, that's quite impressive. Yeah, that works out quite well. Yeah. So, yeah, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. That's showing at 93 miles at where, when we finished what's, what's remaining. Yeah. I've, I, I, think, I think that's probably still a little, bit, a little bit optimistic. I think you could probably realistically get 80, 85 out of it. I think with real real world range using it for all types of driving but still impressive it's impressive um, 
and it looks really nice. It's a real smart looking car. It's cute. It's a really cute little car. And I would I would be very happy to drive it. I would. Yeah. I'd be proud of it. Something to note here is the servicing. This car has got a full service history and I had a quick flick through it. The service consists of a dryer cartridge, it consists of a check of the brake fluid, it consists of a diagnostic check on the high voltage battery or the traction battery, and that is it. I think they probably stick an additive in your screen wash and maybe check your wiper blades and your tyres, but in terms of parts, no, there's not really anything on them. So you really have got cheap motor in here. I think this would make a fantastic second car for us. I, I'm still in a discussion with Kate about a Renault Twizy and we keep coming back to the subject of you've got to pay 50 quid a month to rent the battery and the more I think about it I think that is a little bit of a piss take. I do. I think it, I do think it's a piss take. It, I do. For that kind of car as well. Yep. Sorry, a bit of a bumpy road. Um, for that kind of car, if you can call it a car. No, it's a quadricycle. Quadricycle. So. Yeah, that's a bit excessive. Yeah. Whereas this is an actual car with a heater and some air conditioning. A windows. Um, stereo. <laughs> um, a good stereo at that. Do it left over. And you, you can sit next to each other, which you obviously you can't do if there's two of you in a Twizy. Yeah. But then you have got the fun factor with the Twizy. The Twizy is it's designed, it was made like that for a reason, yeah. wasn't it? It has actually got a real fun factor to it. I mean, you can throw it around a little bit. Um, you know, you can put it into a corner and, and it, it corners really well. And I think that's a lot to do with the weight of the battery and also the, the low centre of gravity. You can really feel it sticks to the road. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So well that you feel every bump. <laughs> you do also feel every bump. <laughs> but no, yeah. I, I, I'm getting used to it. I'd put up with it. One of the first things I noticed when I got into this car is that the steering is quite heavy. Um, you really have to put some effort into turning the wheel when you're going around a corner. Now, that is something I've got used to, and I think perhaps, you know, you get used to whatever it is you're driving at the time, and then you get into another car and it feels a bit different. But it still is a bit heavy, I'd say. Yeah, I, I, I think it's fair to say that getting out of... Uh, do you remember the steering in the Leaf was very light? Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. if you got out of the Leaf and got into this, you'd feel it. I think that is something that you probably will get used to, to be fair. On a plus note, this car does have adjustable regenerative braking. It has... Oh, can't even say that word. <laughs> it was a tongue twister. But it's got two little paddles on the side of the steering wheel, um, which which we'll show you, um, to turn it up or turn it down. I think it's, it's three stage. You basically turn it off, on, Oh no, it's two stage, isn't it? No, it's three. No, three. It's three. Yeah. three stage, you've got it off, on, or another plus one, I guess, yeah. which just gives you three stage regenerative braking. And I think some people don't like that, the regen factor, so they can turn it off. Personally, I don't see why you wouldn't use it because it gives you a few extra miles. Um, I think also it, it gives you the option of turning it on very quickly and turning it off very quickly. Sometimes yeah. situations change, don't they? And actually you think, hey, I can have that energy there, recuperate it, or you want to turn it off. So. Yeah, you see a massive hill. Yeah, but bearing in mind, all, all what you do there is controllable with your foot on the throttle. It's so tiny. It is. It fits through any gap. We just fitted through a hole big enough for about a <laughs> cigarette packet. Straight through, no messing. <laughs> Yeah, in the Tesla we'd have had to reverse. So let's talk about price. It's not as cheap as internal combustion counterpart, whether it be a petrol or a diesel, but you've got the reliability factor and the longevity factor. 15 brand new, I think, something like that. We had a quick look, didn't we, on mm. a couple of websites, and yeah, they're, some of them are going for a lot of money. Yeah, big money. So, But that's the EV market. Prices will come down, prices will fall. They have already. But definitely well worth a drive if you can get your hands on one if you can find one because like i say they are like hen's teeth They're rare. that said i know somebody who's got one jonathan porterfield of eco-cars.net yeah it right didn't got I? It right on and orkney he's got one oh this this one this one <laughs> but uh, he hasn't got it yet because i've got it we've yeah, got it haven't we we've so, got it so. but it will be for sale shortly it will be for sale it's for, oh, everything's for sale with john everything's for sale it's for sale right now so, so far, 47.4 miles, still got 35 miles showing and we've been doing some 0 to 60 sprints in it. We've done four or five of them now. And um, 
We think it's quicker than the 11.4, don't we? It does feel quicker, and it, it feels quicker than the Zoe, which I think has got a similar 0 to 60 time. I can't remember now, but I don't think it's, it's too different. But then it, I think the Zoe felt quicker than this 0 to 60 time as well. Yeah. I think I think most EVs do. I think it's just because of the amount of torque they produce. I don't know if it just feels quicker because it is a small car. I don't know, but it yeah. just it feels nippy. It's got a lovely feel to it. So, that brings us on to the question, because we've been driving it a little while now. Do you think you'd buy one of these? I love it. I do love it. I think, as I said earlier, again, as a second car, I think it'd be amazing to have. So, um, would you have one? I would have a Renault Twizy. Would you? Yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't. I mean, I don't know what Jonathan's planning on putting it, putting it on the market for. But I think we'll have to wait and see. Did he? Has he, has he said anything? <laughs> I think. I think he'll sell it straight away. Yeah. I, I, I think, especially where he is on Orkney, this is a perfect car. You can't think. You, you can't have a better playground than Orkney. Like no. the Nissan Leaf, the old Renault Zoe, this car. Because you can't go anywhere, and the fuel prices on Orkney are extortionate. The, 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 because where else can you go? You can't drive out of town, well you can drive out of town, but you can't drive off the island. No. So you, you're, well, you're well and truly stuck there. By having one of these, it's it's even more sensible and, and cost effective. And also, Orkney generates all of its electricity with renewables now, doesn't it? I think they're, they're 105% or 110%, I think, sure. Jonathan said. That's a good thing. But yeah, it's bloody fantastic. This will be on Orkney in about three days' time. And this is a this is a rare car. I think that's the other selling point for this yeah. car. You can't find them, like James said, they're like hen's teeth. And I think that's another selling point really. So we carried on driving and waffling for about an hour and we managed 81 miles on one charge. Although the drive was firm and at times a little bumpy, we consider the Smart one of the most fun EVs we have driven so far. By the end of the day, we had got used to the power steering, and if there was one thing we'd change, it would be the addition of some form of rapid charging. But that aside, this is an excellent local and short distance EV. And I think it's one that we would definitely consider in addition to our current car. And it's yeah. been fun. And it's been really it good been fun. fun. So, thank Love you for fun. watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. And if you liked it, please click like and subscribe. And any questions, feel free to ask us and you know, if we can answer them, we will. That's it. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. See you next time.